Yo, 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 we live in the launching pad. I got one of my good brothers with me. Man, this is a long time coming. Man, we've been trying to do this for a couple months, man. Trying to get together, sit down, and, and, and dialogue. But here we are, man. This brother, LJ Malone. How you, bro? Good, man. Good, good. How was your day, bro? You know, busy, you know, getting to it. You already know. Right, right, right. But as the fans know, they know how I like to start this thing off. Um, where you from, bro? Uh, well, I guess when uh, when speaking on like uh, <coughs> what person is like, I guess what you, my origins. <laughs> I was born. I was born in uh, Winston Salem, right. North Carolina. You know what I mean? uh, but yeah, that was because of my father. He's from Winston Salem, North Carolina. So all my father's side is from there. But uh, yeah, I was raised here in Macon. You know, my mom is from from Macon. Uh, but yeah, my I. Spent a few years out in elementary school out in Texas, like going back and forth okay. between here and, and, and Macon. But yeah, I was, you know, elementary, middle, high school, majority of my, my school, and I was raised here. Okay. So what was your upbringing in Macon like? Like, you can't you remember those days? Yeah, man, just a, a whole lot of days at the, at the record shop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man, but, you know, my, my mom is the owner of Habershire Records, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, you know, as I was younger, you know, my mom, she worked 12 days, uh, I'm sorry, 12 hours a day, six days a week. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, every single day. When I got out of school, I was going to the record shop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, I was learning how to, you know, uh, wait on customers, learn how to work a cash register. Right. You know, just, just entrepreneurship. You know, so, you learn business etiquette early. Yeah, right, right. Okay. You know, just from just from watching her. And, uh, like, my, my mother, she, you know, my, my family was already into entrepreneurship anyway. Right. Um, so, you know, I learned from watching my uncle, uh, Alex Habersham, we actually started the record shop, you know, and then my mom took it over after like nine years, you know what I'm saying? So we 51 years old this year, but, uh, yeah, I watched him start different businesses. And then my, excuse me, then my grandfather, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, he was a pastor, you know, down here at First Baptist Church, and he actually had a school for pastors where they, you know, uh, gave accreditation to pastors and stuff like that, and, um, and he started something called a Making Courier, which was like the first... Uh, black newspaper here, okay. and then um, you know from that point when I was younger, he used to, you know, have me out on the streets, you know, passing out newspapers. You know what I'm saying? So right. that was really like my first memory of like true entrepreneurship at a young age, even more so than the records I actually, you know, was me being out on those corners, you know, with those newspapers. You know. Right. So yeah. where 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 does? Cause I know you uh, a man of culture, and it's funny, you know, today's mathematics is culture. And I'm like, wow, just how the universe aligned, you being here on the culture day, I was like, okay, that's confirmation. But um, how did you, um, because we both know that making lacks culture. How did you get that culture from being in the record store or just family or just, you know, just self? Mm, I mean, I was, because, you know, culture, for one, I think culture is kind of a broad term right, right now. I've been... Spend a lot of time, I guess, just trying to define culture for people. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. We said so. I guess when, in the sense of understanding of uh, like our culture as far as black folks and what's you know the needs of our people and that kind of a thing, I, I say it started there. You know, it started in being around a family that was already involved in you know trying to help educate our people about certain things. You know what I'm saying? You know, and just trying to mobilize our folks to you know to to do for each other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so that sense of unity, you know, that aspect of of culture, you know, understanding reciprocation and how you and I benefit one another. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, your win is my win. You feel me? Like, I got that spirit from. But like, like I'm li I'm listening to the terminology and the word that you're using. A lot of people from here don't use that in their conversation. Right, 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 right. So right, right, so right, where, right. Did, where did that aspect oh, for you come from? Just you know. Well, I would say more so from. I mean, just studying the knowledge itself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like studying. Uh, great master teachers and uh, studying ancient African centered uh, culture and philosophy, you know, so people like Dr. John Henry Clark, you know, Anthony Browder, Dr. Ben Zuccone, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, Dr. Even the places like Dr. Walter Williams, Francis Press Wilson, the forefathers. Exactly. The Marcus Garvey's of the world, you know, even some, some white authors, you know, uh, you know, uh, Massey and, you know, people like that, you know, I checked out a lot of different, you know, so my thing was never about, I, I just, I love to read. You know what I mean? My entire life, like, and I always had an uh, affinity for I always want to know the creator, you know. I always want to know, any area I cared about God, you know what I mean? Because I felt like if I knew about 
the creator, then I would know about any and everything else in life. You know what I mean? So, like, if I had any questions about this bottle, well, then I need to figure out, you know, how this bottle was created. You know what I'm saying? So, and then that always leads back to God. So, when I started learning about, uh, you know, African-centered culture and principles, you know, studying, like, E5, studying comedic science, things like that, you know what I mean? Like, it started opening up for me. And then um, I also was blessed to be around certain movements, you know. I was around, like, the Nation of Islam, you know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to Brother uh, George Muhammad, you know, and uh, Brother uh, uh, brother Darren Muhammad, you know, down at the mosque. And even from uh, being a young brother, you know, they would always invite brothers out to see the mosque, you know what I'm saying? Hey, come out to the mosque, but I know you go to church, you know, there's nothing, well, come out to the mosque, you know what I mean? So I was able to go out there and see that movement. Um, I was around some of the Hebrew Israelite brothers, you know, that followed Ben Ami before a lot of the IUSC, you know, you know, factions now, but able to see some of them. Uh, they were receiving the Wapian movement when they were down here, gotcha. you know, Dr. Malachi, and, you know, some of his sons were my, were my business partners, but, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's, see, <clears throat> that's funny because I guess you was around those people that was in those things, but to certain people, they would say that making it is not a cultural place, but from what you're describing, it was a lot of cultural. Yeah, it was right here. That's <laughs> right. I guess you got to be... I guess you gotta be looking for it in, in, in the in the now or or just into it, I guess. Right, right. And and, and the, what's crazy is the primary the root of all culture is agriculture, right? Mm -hmm. And what's crazy, a lot of people don't even know that making is the first place that people practice agriculture in American history. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. So like culture in America actually began right here in Macon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, this you know, yeah, man, so I, I just was, I guess, you know, when it, when I didn't realize, I didn't recognize what I was doing and talking to you, you know, I'm kind of recognizing it, but as I got older, I recognized that true power, you know, comes from the inside out, you know what I'm saying? And I'm um, not the outside in, you feel me? What, and around, around what age would you say, because you, like you said, you said you liked to, to read a lot, that, that, that was in you already, but when do you say you got into like more, Conscious knowledge of self reading. Mm, it happened when I was uh, well, I was dealing with the devil a little bit, you know what I'm saying. But for me to get, from when I immersed myself in, I was like 17. Okay. I was uh, I was in a world history class, right, in uh, um, <laughs> Central High School, and I always shout out this teacher because uh, he was dead wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. So any other teachers that intend on hiding history or hiding the truth about who we are as a people from their kids, hopefully the next student will put that teacher on blast too. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? But I had a teacher named uh, Stan Brown, right? He was a English, he was a, 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 a word of history teacher. He was on Jeopardy and everything, right? Uh, but when I was in his class, uh, you know, we were going through our word history book. You know, word history book was like 1,400 pages, right? And um, in this book, uh, you know, we had like 10 pages on, on Africa, you know what I mean? And uh, before all that, you know, we went through Australia, South America, you know, I'm learning about the people, the customs, you know what I'm saying, with the, the natural resource, all this stuff, like, and then we got 20, 30, 40, 50 pages on these countries or continents that I never ever even really go to, you know what I mean, and then um, we got Africa on that 10 pages, so I'm like, wow, and then I'm in a classroom full of, like, majority black folks, you know what I'm saying, majority black students, you know, make them majority. so long story short, I asked the teacher, I said, Stan Brian, man, I mean, why, why do we only have like 10 pages of Africa, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to learn about, you know, my people, what the woo He said um, that I was disturbing the class. Mm -hmm. He kicked me out of the class. Then I received ISS for asking why we only had 10 pages in my word history book in school. You feel me? So that really pissed me off, you know what I'm saying, on a whole nother level, and it motivated me. And um, so I was blessed to have a conversation with my sister. Shout out to my big sister, Carla, who was already, you know, studying different people, uh, Dr. Delbert Blair and uh, Bobby Hammond, you know, a lot of those folks, you know, she was really, really in tune, right? And she knew a lot of those folks. And uh, she gave me a book from Dr. Uh, from Dr. Anthony Browder called The Browder Files, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I came to her, I said, I said, sis, man, look, man, this teaching to piss me off, man. I want to know about myself. I got ISS, like, I know about the civilization. You feel me? So she, she had, uh, it's like 22 essays on the African-American experience. Like, it talked about the Michael Jackson syndrome, like, how we feel about black and white complexion. They talk about melanin, you know, the science. Star Wars. Right, all that stuff, man. They talk about different symbology that we see every day, but they really came from, you know, Africa, you know what I mean? So it just opened my eyes to so many things. I'm like, wow, you feel me? So 
I just remember me telling my sister something. She was like, uh, she had a she had a, a brother with her one day, and we were talking, and the dude was like, well, he was like, well, what do you believe in? Because we were talking, I forgot what we were talking. We said, what do you believe? And I, I, I don't even know where this came from. But at this point, I said, well, I don't believe in belief. Right. You feel me? I never even heard of the concept of knowing over belief or none of that. It was just in my spirit. I was saying, I don't believe in belief. Right. And it was like, wow, someone just, you know what I'm saying? Like, like like, wow, I'm like, I don't believe in belief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, well, oh, shit. Like, oh, so if, what is there? You know what I mean? So man, I just started immersing myself with knowledge, man. Like, book after book. Like, man, I read everything. You know it what was, I mean? So, it, was, it was the same thing for me, brother. But unfortunately, you know, I caught mine after the fact. Like, I already, I was so ignorant to the point that I put myself in a cage, if you get what I'm saying. I understand. And... I got the knowledge through one of my roommates. You know what I'm saying? One of my roommates, he had like how the how the prison room is set up. You have two lockers right here, and then right. you have like a bookshelf in the middle. And he had uh, the auto the autobiography of Malcolm X mm -hmm. and Man Child and the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. And both of these books, <laughs> what's so crazy about it? Both of these books, my mother had wrote me a letter, and she was like, "Why are you in, Why are you down the road?" If you ever come across these books, or when you go to the library, you start going to the library, look up these books, and that was right there. But those books broke a conversation. Like, I was like, what you know about those books? And we right. began dialogue, and he began teaching me. Right. He began giving me knowledge of self and put me on brothers like Anthony Broder and John Henry Clark and Elijah Muhammad and all of that, and started. Right. And it was funny because. It's like, these black men been around for years. Your Marcus Garvey's, your Nova Jurali's, right? But these names are not common. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Absolutely. These names is not common amongst the culture, but these men sacrifice their lives for me and you. Absolutely, man. Right? Absolutely. And then I was just like, wow, you know, we speak on, you know, at that time, I'm looking at the black men that I do know. You know, and nothing, I'm not taking nothing away from these black men because some of these black men have become successful, like your Jay Z's, your Snoop's, your, in that industry. But I'm, I'm like, at this point in my life, I was like, man, I'm limiting myself. I'm, I'm my world is so small because I don't know nothing else. Right, right. I didn't, you know, I heard the names Marcus Garvey and all of that, but. <laughs> To be honest, at this point, they was just street names to me because I know Marcus Garvey Boulevard, I know Frederick Douglass, I know MLK. And that's, it sounds so ignorant, but that's how most of us really look at it. Right. Because we don't really know the men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And until we know the men, we could see like, damn, I could do that too. If I could just become knowledgeable. Right. If I just put that dedication, if I just sacrifice, if I just right, right. do these different things. Right. And when we when we talk about stop the violence and I wanna talk about making peace, mm -hmm. right? How do you really think what how do you really think we're gonna tackle the problem? Well I tell you right now, uh come on. Well me and you didn't even have had time to really completely talk about uh, like actually what we're doing now. Uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm um uh, I'm a site supervisor for this program that uh I feel I'm blessed to, for one, even to even know about it, uh, that it even exists. But you know, I'm site supervisor of this program is called uh, Cure Violence Global, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the, the program is getting into uh, goes into neighborhoods, you know, as violence interrupters, you know, outreach workers, people that literally go and work with high risk individuals in different communities and work with them on a consistent basis. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? They help provide wraparound services, counseling, mm -hmm. uh, literally build real relationships with those average individuals and the community, you know, where well, the community polices the community before we even have to go to the police or anything. Like, matter of fact, we don't even, this hard is we don't even deal with police. Exactly. You feel me? We only deal with community. You feel me? So, um, that aspect along with uh, a lot of the works that we, you and I still are doing, you know, right. uh, teaching the culture, you know, mm -hmm. understanding the science, understanding mathematics, you know, right. uh, because you know, it's hard to talk about that in language terms sometimes. You know, each one of us is blessed to have a different way of delivering our the message, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you and I, you know, we can build, we know, like we talk about something like this high science stuff that right. 
You know, we said, man, this, I mean, you can talk about, probably come give a solution to the world's problems in five minutes, you know, just the people, everybody understood these different concepts, you know what right. I'm saying? But each one of us has a gift to deliver the lesson in a different, yeah, way. A different way, you know what I mean? So that's that's really more so what I focus on now, you know. Uh, I, I I believe in my whole heart, and I know in my whole heart that we have every answer to every problem that we have. It's just a matter of our people waking up and, and seeing, you know. So when you ask me about culture, you know, that's that's what I really uh, I pray for, and I'm I'm working every day towards our people understanding that we have pragmatic solutions. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that everything is connected, and we have. Simplistic. We have simplistic solutions to very complex, complex problems. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's mine, right? Right. Absolutely. You know, it it, it 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 begins complex, but then when you start breaking it down, you simplify, right? Right. Right. And to me, I feel like that's the problem. You get what I'm saying? It, and and we all know that before light, it was darkness, and that darkness represents that ignorance. And I don't mean to bash my people because I was there. A lot of us are just ignorant. A lot of us just don't know. A lot of us just, even when it comes to history, like a lot of us don't know the history to even reflect and say, hey, we could do it that way. Or we just did it that way. Or let's just follow that blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Or just pick off, pick up where they left off instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, what yeah, well, I've seen really guns with you, like this is me shooting straight from the hill. You know, like, through my study, the reason why I think that's the biggest problem is because we can't talk about what happened to us. You feel me? Right. We can talk about the, like, our accomplishments, you know what I'm saying? But we can't talk about the oppression. You know, you know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that oppression hid a lot of our accomplishments. They assimilated a lot of our inventions and accomplishments and turned them into their own. Right. From my study and research, it began with so-called Hellenistic or Greek culture. You know, or the Indo-European or Aryans that came out of the Caucasus Mountains. You feel me? Those were the first ones to get our knowledge. <laughs> you feel right. me? So, like, when we speak on that, like, that's not being racist. You understand what I'm saying? I think that all races, like, this conversation about critical race theory, we need to have the open and honest conversation, right? Feel me? Just because I'm saying that, you know, you might have came from a group of people that did this. If they did it, they did it. You feel me? It's like being blood and crypt. If I grew up in the hood, well, 40 years ago, my big homie or whoever that I didn't even know, shot your brother, cousin, whatever, and now we beefing because of what happened 40 years ago, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be responsible for it, even if I don't wanna be. Let me ask you this. <laughs> is, 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 is the word racist um, negative to you? Do you, do you? When you hear the word racist, do you hear it from a, a negative point of view? Like, is it a negative? Yeah, because I mean, we're already being programmed to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, uh, yeah, me personally, if I were to look at it from my lens, nah, I don't see it as bad because I see... Because you know the word. Right, right. I, you I'm, understand the word. Right, right. And, and I, I, I want people to understand the word, of what racist means. And I, and I truly believe that we need to start moving like that. Like, we need to know exactly what what is. Right, right. But even the word and, race, right? Who, who, who are we running against? Just as far as, as far as as far as race meaning right. original people like who, who right. we are, you right. know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, I so, just said, I just said that word though because like it was some years ago that I never really thought about that. You feel me? Like they call it race. You right. feel me? That's like it's a competition. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to us, hey, I'm gonna give you an example, right? Like for years they talk, I was taught that you know the word excuse me, but I say cracker, right? Mm -hmm. right. Like the word cracker that it meant. You know, we say niggas all the time, right? But the word cracker meant when the the slave owner, you know, the hit the slave, what, 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 right? I ended up learning that it wasn't true. That in actuality, that word like it came from the the cracker term came from a, a Yoruba word. I can't remember the word, but it, it meant cracking, right? And it was them, it was the slaves at the time talking about how the son was cracking the slave master's skin. So it was cracking. So they called them crackers because the sun was cracking their skin. Right. You feel me? Now, when I look at the narrative of how it's presented, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm a person that grows up and thinks cracker is somebody, that could almost put a certain type of fear in me, like, you know, like a domination yeah. kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now, when I look in front of the lens of, well, darn, 
Even our ancestors who were being told that they were nothing and they were this and they were that, they had the common sense enough to know that the sun gives them life. You remember and um, is hurting others. You remember you know what I'm saying? I know you've seen Roots. The movie Roots. Right, 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 right. It's it's that viv the, this the, what you're talking about is that scene when they first come over here and they really just looking at the Caucasian. And they looking at, you know, the skin, the eye color, just the hair, just everything. It was just different. Right. It was their first time coming into that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I always go back to Brother Peace and speaking of us coming from our original state. And when he refers to the dog, how the dog was. Like, he remembers dog before the, when, when they used to use the bathroom. They used to dig a hole. Mm. But now they're so domesticated, they don't even do that no more. It's mm. not a part of their natural. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm wow, saying? Right. And that's how we, we are. Mm -hmm. We're so away from our origin that we for, we forgot. We don't, it ain't even natural to us no more. Right, to, right to now. Yeah. And, and that's what I saw like, through a lot of my studying. Like, just getting to the origins. You feel me? And it's not really, you know, it's all just about truth. You know, it's not about, you know, me being better than you, you being better than me, because even, you know, because even another thing Brother P says that is, is so profound, and I think it's, it's, this is the beauty, this is love. When you're able to, uh, he says, the problem was we don't know, you know, we spirits with a body and not bodies with a spirit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I look at the essence of who you truly are is spirit and not your physical nature, then I can respect you as a, you know, for your character and who you are. You know, you know what I'm saying? And we can bond on that level, you know, beyond what we see in this physical, I got this and you got that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that's as a people, that's when people are like, how did that happen to us? How did these folk out people come invade and take us over and we had all this and that? Because we weren't xenophobic. Right. We didn't look at each other in the material. That was a new concept that was gave that was given to us. Mm -hmm. We looked at everything in the spirit first, and then it was manifested. Everything in the material was manifested out of the spirit. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So these folks coming out of these, you know, mountains, okay, whatever you want to say, what they're coming out of, we weren't scared of them. We don't look at you like you less than us or whatever. No, we'll teach you. We'll feed you. We'll do, right. you know, at that it, point. It, it, you know what I'm saying? But then <laughs> at this point, you know, after having a history mm -hmm. of having, you know, you open your door, you know, and have somebody come and rape you, kill you, burn your house down, you know what I'm saying, kick you out and then rebuild it and say it was theirs, you never lived there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Now it's a different ball game, you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm still going to have this inside of me, I'm going to have this love inside of me, but love ain't sweet all the time, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm able to learn from my ancestors, learn from their mistakes. You're not going to get me like this no more. Right. I'm going to teach my kids this history. Right. You did steal our knowledge. You stole our religion. You stole our sciences. You stole our knowledge of uh, astronomy, agriculture, uh, you, whatever you want to, you know, everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so at the end of the day, we should be able to tell that story. There's nothing racist about that. You did this. Right. You feel me? Right. So I'm not going to feel bad about telling the story. And, and, you know, and, telling and that story. That's, that, <laughs> that, that's what I've been telling people. Like, the truth is history. History don't lie. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is study history and the facts will line up. Now, even though they try to erase history and take it out of certain things, and like you said, you only have the 10 pages of Africa <laughs> in school, but we know places like Homeland Village, shout out to Homeland Village. Plenty of knowledge, but it's so much history too. Right, sister. It's so much history too. And speaking on history, like Macon's history, the Indian mounds, and like you were saying, how this land really started culture. Like, and I think that's important that, I think that would be important with the development of making too. Just being conscious of that history. Like, I know you're familiar with the history. As far as the thing you make and then the Creek Indians and the removal of the Indians and then us being placed there. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about 2022, where we at now. Mm -hmm. What are some of the solutions UGSB radio
the home of the indie artists. When you want to listen, you can go and download the Radio King app and search UGSB Radio. Or search RadioKing.com slash radio slash UGSB dash Radio 1. That was a lot to say. Just go get the app. The Underground Sound Broadcast Radio. The home of the indie artists. We also have slots, packages, and programs to fit the needs for small businesses and nonprofits that are reaching for the community. UGSB Radio, the home of the independent. So what are some of the solutions, brother? Well, solutions, um, I think the solutions are, for one, they're, they're all African-centered, me personally. Um, I think that um, the main thing is understanding cause and effect. Um, you know, it's getting back to a point of understanding natural order. I think that uh, the world right now thinks that there's no such thing as truth. You know what I mean? Like, if I believe something, that make it true. Right. You know what I mean? So opinion is like, it's king right now. Well, I mean, we, we're in an information age where there's so much information that you have to decipher what truth is. And if you don't really have a, a founded reference to where you're going back, like, you're taking this knowledge and like, mm, that's not it. You get what I'm saying? Right. A lot of people don't have that, so it's like finding that truth. Right, right, right. Not, but but I, think that, I just think that a lot of folks just don't even think that it exists. You know what I'm saying? Truth. Like. Like, period. Like, they just, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a lot of conversations with folks where they just don't think anything is true no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, or there is no truth, right? So, and to be honest with you, I try not to, like, I try not to bash the spiritual community or churches or this matter or whatever. But, you know, personally, it is rooted in that. You know what right. I mean? Because that's life science. You know, um, like, science tells us that for one, like, in our society, we live by, you know, this, this is a very taboo subject, but I always talk about it. That we live in a matrilineal society because nature works matrilineally. Right. Everything that creates is feminine. Everything that maintains and keeps things structured will be what we consider to be masculine. You know what I'm saying? So we in African civilization, we venerated the feminine principle because of its creative abilities. You know what I'm saying? So even when it comes to relationships, right? right? So like we talk about ancient Kim or ancient African science or whatever. All it was 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 uh, 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 universal principles mm-hmm. in psychology. I mean, that's all that it is. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we lost our ability to understand universal principles. Soon as the, in the Nicene Creed, 323, they gave us, we believe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, when Christianity was created historically, when the Constantine, when they, for them to have a motto, they can have all these people. All these priests, the greatest minds, so called, at the time of the world, come together to create a new religion, you know, create a, a dominant, you know, religion. And their creed, as all this, the only thing they come up with is we believe. Right. You feel me? Why? You know what I'm saying? Because it's new. Mm-hmm. We didn't believe. You know what I'm saying? We knew. We or knew. we didn't know. Know thyself was before we believed. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that. That's the, that's where the solutions are. The solutions is in knowing, not believing, not your opinions. You know what I'm saying? And brothers like me and you, you know, when we talk about we talk about so like mathematics or we right. talk about science. You know what I'm saying? Like me and you, we can measure those things. Like me and you measure our conversations. You know what I'm saying? And we had a time where, especially with the young people, it's like you got to show and prove to them. Yeah. <laughs> and my thing is, why don't the successful people come to the forefront? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's going to take more than me and you. Even though me and you show and prove, we show and prove what the knowledge does by our actions and what we do. Right. You know what I'm saying? But there's other people who have used their knowledge, gained, let's give back in that way. You know what I'm saying? Let's, that same formula process that you use, let's put that back into the community and raise up. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I feel like that's needed. And it needs to be promoted more than just... You you see the athlete that comes back to the community and gives back, but how often do you see the scholar? Right. You get what I'm saying? The, right. the, 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 the educated brother or, the, or just the conscious brother. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. You know, we know the Dr. Umars and, and brothers like that, but it's... There's plenty more. 
Right. It's like more yeah. than that. You know, and I, I would like to salute some people like this really out here. They don't really, you know, do it for the fame or love. And you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you do a lot of stuff and don't raise your hand. You feel me? Like, I, mean, I, mean, I did so much right and never, people never even know God did certain stuff. You know? Right. Like, Brother Derek did in the house. You know what I mean? He always, he's a real soldier. He's always doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's behind the camera right now. He didn't raise his hand one time. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, it's a lot of people behind the scenes that make things happen that you would never know either. You know? Right. And I think that's a part about the culture that we live in now is more of, you know, it's people that ain't even doing nothing. But they're going to give you a photo op, they're going to give you a live video, a vlog, they're going to give you a whole everything, you know what I'm saying? And make something appear like they're doing the work when they're not doing the work, you know right. what I'm saying? And it's not even to a point where people are tricked into thinking that that's really doing work, you know what I mean? So you even get young folks that are think, well, shoot, this is, you know, this is me being organized in my community, just me. Throwing on a t-shirt, and I just go post up, hold a sign for about 30 minutes, take a picture, you know, and then keep it moving. Shoot, I didn't did my thing. Right. You feel me? They ain't thought about, you know, they ain't talking about everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, are you talking to people? Mm -hmm. Do you have a real relationship? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, because right. that's where it began. Yeah. You know, it just began with love. Right. You know, and are you talking to people? So I think these educated so-called scholars, these so-called whoever, I think it's classism. You know, and I think us as black folks, we got it worse than other races a lot of times because... You know, we, we so, you know, traumatized and this and that, whatever, whatever. So as soon as we get into new positions or whatever, we want to forget all about that and just only deal with this new aspect of our life or whatever. Right. But then, you know, when your cousin, you know, need a, need a, a, a property loan or when, you, when, you, when your sister or somebody got shot or when, you, when your son, you know, can keep getting in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Woo -woo. I'm speaking from a point like, okay, so when you go on Facebook, you know, you're going to see the regular. You're going to see club action. You're going to see promoting of this, that, and the third, right? Right, right, right. But we know it's way more to life than that. And there's people that's living a life like that, right? Right, right. So right. what I'm saying, it, it has to come to a point where we have the same type of arsenal as that world, too. Like, mm -hmm. our world needs to be visible, too. Because I know you live a righteous lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? That needs to be seen. You know what I'm saying? What you do. Because mo majority of us, we're preserved. You know what I'm saying? We're, mm -hmm. we're real in solitude and we stay to ourselves because we're trying to be free of the BS. That's you right. get what I'm saying? That's right. But now, our lifestyle needs to be shown because... The devil's playground is, is shown at an all-time high. Righteous, righteous. You get what I'm saying? Let's see, let's see how the gods and the, and the and the goddess do it. That that's my main reason of having this. You know what I'm saying? Because these conversations happen on the regular. Right, right. But a lot of people don't know this. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Because right. it's not put out there as much. Right. It's right. not being promoted, and that's how I think we could really change the narrative. That's the purpose of the newsletter. That's the purpose of our radio station. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of all of this. You know what I'm saying? Just right, to change right, the narrative right, and the frequency. Right, right, right You get what right, I'm saying? Right. And that's what I was... Right. Was, was, yeah, and I think, I think you're doing a great job with that, man. Like, everybody can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally don't like... I've been doing the open mics, like, and working with artists and just for, like, 20 years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I literally don't have the time or the, even the motivation on certain aspects to work in the industry in that way. Like... I want to change the culture. You feel me? Like, I literally can get anybody on radio all across the country. I can sit you down with a major or whoever. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't want to be responsible for doing the same thing or killing our people or being a part of the same frequency. You know what I'm saying? Like, I turn it down all the time. And people even tell you, man, like, you know what I mean? This is my you want to do this. Now, like, if you going to be doing the same thing, like, why? You feel me? Like, I want to be in the streets like that, like, you know what I'm saying? I did certain things, you know what I'm saying? I can't say, you know, what I, you know, you know, whatever, but, you know, I want to never know so-called full-time street, industry, doing everything person. Mm -hmm. But being in the industry, uh, it matters a certain artist and, and having certain movements and me having to take certain people out of town on promo campaign, I mean, you know, I'm in shoot out, so, you know what I'm saying? I've got to worry about, you know, I'm living, I'm in the streets sure. doing music. You, you feel me? So, Eventually, I kept saying this, like, you know, the music industry was like, we're almost worse than the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we got to, we got to, we got to think too, like, everything comes from something. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, that rap, hip hop, whatever you want to call it, 
that's where its origins come from, the right. streets. So right. it's always right. going to be that. Right. But the origins of rap, the origins of hip hop, it was on a positive level. Like rap was created to stop the gang violence. Right. It's, you know, Africa Bambada, he held a a, 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 um, a rally. A rally, right. And yeah. said that this is what we're going to do. Yeah, even the gangs. The gangs weren't against fighting each other. They were uplifting the community. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, <laughs> mean, I mean, just just like like you said, it's, it's, all, it's the same thing all over the world. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to the ghetto. And we was fighting each other. But mm -hmm. rap was and music was the bridge that brought everybody together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we can't agree on this, 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 but we could agree on this. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel music has the power now. I seen a post today, you know, about rappers. I forget what it, what it was said, but the, the, the substance of the question, I mean, of the statement was, like, rap is the leading, the leading genre. What we gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen how hip hop has transitioned, how it's gotten older, how it's gotten wiser, how it's gotten into libraries, how it's gotten into schools like Harvard, where Nas is sitting down, right, breaking down his lyrics, right. Brothers like me and you, who have the knowledge. Who have sacrificed and studied to just to give back? Mm -hmm. I feel like these are our tools, right? Rap, because this is what um, the youth is gravitating towards. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's, yeah, it definitely is a tool. I mean, I'm not saying I definitely ain't saying I threw none of it in the trash. Yeah. You feel me? Like I still am involved. I still work with artists. Um, I still do a lot of that. Like I said, my main thing is changing the frequency and. Once I got to a certain level, right, like, I, I've gotten to a point where I work with major artists, like, you know, I manage major artists, like, you know, Shop Boys, you know, I work with artists, you know, I, I manage platinum artists, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, and I work with platinum, you know, I, I work with the top people in the industry, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So, my thing was, once I got there and saw how they operated, I saw that they control distribution, like, you feel me? Like, they control, like, the algorithm now, like, with social media, things like that, so, yeah, we, like, I heard hundreds, like, in my open mic, we have so many artists that came through with the best quality music. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't talking about killing and shooting nobody. None of that. Like, the best music. You know what I mean? I tried my hardest. Even some of them had budgets, had money right. to push these records, to put them, whatever. You would have powers that be to certain people with that would not push play. Mm -hmm. Or they would not put behind, you know, any kind of energy effort to push music that could be uplifting right. because they'd rather push this negative. Energy, low frequency okay. stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, me being as a person as I've been a, a pro, I'm a promoter. I'm a gatekeeper guy. You okay. feel me? I'm not. I'm a creative. I'm on the creative side too, mm -hmm. but I'm more on the push play side. You feel okay. me? So when I felt like me being on the push play side, if I can't change what's allowed to be played, mm -hmm. then what's the point of me trying to work on this side and keep putting the same stuff in their hands to play what they want to play? Nah, I'm going. I want to change the culture and the frequency to the point where. They have to play this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I'm working on at this point is where the so-called gatekeepers can, can change the algorithm. I want to change the algorithm. Right. You feel me? Physically, right. on the internet, on the terrestrial radio, all of that. And I feel that it begins with the grassroots level of work that we're doing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like by changing the mindset it, it, of the it, people, it, you know. That's the key. It, it begins with the people. Once you get the audience, then you could present a narrative to them. Especially if it's one that's beneficial to them. For sure. You know what I'm and saying? And that's, that's part of a culture that we speak about. Right. You know, being beneficial to one another. You know what I'm saying? I, I was listening to, um, I don't know if you're familiar with 19 Keys. Yeah, yeah. But um, he was speaking about, if I'm not bringing good to you, I'm devaluing you. And... If it's, if you look at the words, right, mm -hmm. take an O out of good, what you got? Yeah. And if you look at deval devalue, what, what you got? Devil, right? So that's, it, it, it kind of got me, 
But if I'm not, if I'm not doing something to bring good to you, I'm devaluing you, and that's that. That should be the relationship with everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like you should really push that. Man. You, you know what? Like when you saying that, that's why I like ancient African center. Uh, but there was a concept called there was a concept called my. Eye. You know what I'm saying? You familiar with that? Mm -hmm. It's balance. You feel me? Love, harmony, balance, justice, truth, reciprocity, morality. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you're talking about is exchange. You feel me? That's basic science. You feel me? Even energy. Energy in itself. Like, the concept of sacrifice, like you sacrifice this to God, you sacrifice this. That wasn't an ancient African principle. We didn't look at God or the spirit in terms of sacrifice. We looked at it in terms of exchange. You feel me? Because energy never dies. It's only transferred. You feel me? So, mm -hmm. when I'm giving something to you, it ain't gone for me, you know what I'm saying? It's coming back to me in a totally That's different it. form. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and the same thing, so I'm not looking at it like when I give to you, I'm losing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I can literally, especially like we talk about love that neighbors you love yourself, they talk about it about, right? When we get back to Brother Peace, what he's saying about us looking at each other in spirit, you know, which was our teaching, mm -hmm. and if we, if I know I'm spirit and you spirit, then we are connected. Like this body is the only thing that's separating us. Right. We're the same entity, just with a different body. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's all. We <laughs> like you said, going back down to energy, and knowing that energy is nothing but intelligence anyway. That's all. That that's the connection. We all are intelligence. Now, all of us might have different intelligence, but all of us know we come from that one. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. But see, now, also, now, we're dealing with consciousness and, and, and intelligence. You know, I'm talking energy and consciousness. You know, it's, it's a fine line with that, too. You know what I'm saying? Because your thoughts don't have energy. You feel me? But everything in nature, whether it's unseen or seen, it has energy. It's something that you can measure. You feel right. what I'm saying? Like, nobody can measure your thoughts. You feel me? So, that that's the abode. That's the realm. We talk about the spirit realm with everything that... That zero point, you know what I'm saying? That's the power of those thoughts because we exist on two different planes at the same time. So I'm here and I'm there at the right. same time, you know what I'm saying? And when people realize that, then we're not caught up in what you say to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I look like this, or you know what I'm saying? I'm not caught up on that physical because, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I know where my true power is. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Key to your statement is knowing. Right, you know, right, right. knowing, knowing self, and knowing that higher self, lower self, knowing, right. you know what I'm saying, those vibrations within yourself that's going to trigger you. You know what I'm saying? But, people, about, be, but people be scared of conversation, though. You know what I'm saying? Like how me and you just be able to just flow had a conversation, bro. Yeah. You know why I was so quick? I I'd be happy to talk to you about this. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's rap. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, like brother. I be around people, some of the brightest minds all the time. They they don't even want to talk about the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm working all day, every day, liberating, helping our people in the hood, put my life on the line, doing this, doing that, and talk to folks that say they want to stop these issues, but they only have these conversations that lead to these solutions. So you can have a better understanding of what's going on. You know what I'm um, saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, say this, you know, because, like, again, I'm going to put myself in the place when I was ignorant and I didn't have the knowledge. And I was running away from the conversation, and, and that's what it is, you know, it's, I can't even keep up with you in the conversation because my reference points ain't there, not knowing that LJ ain't that type of dude, you know what I'm saying, he's not going to speak over my head, if anything, he's going to give me the milk first, before right. he give me the meat and potatoes, Right. he's right. going to work me up, absolutely. And, you know, that that's that's what us as people, we have to be accepted of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. We have to be and start running away from it and being stuck in our ignorance. Right. Man. You know, if we don't know and we're around somebody that does know, hey, bro, you mind teaching me? Or, LJ, you know what? I like how you carry yourself, bro. What what got you to that point? What, what, what's some of the things that you got into? What's some of the things that you read? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and... You know, and the next level to that for me was, like, <laughs> the, the next level to me becoming, I guess, a better teacher or leader or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. somebody would consider me, was me being a better listener. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, my listening skills have, have tri like, tripled, you know what I mean? And, like, 
that's where my biggest growth has came from. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, especially when you get into this knowledge or into this work and stuff you're doing, you can be so passionate. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you want to write things like a book that I uh, wrote on the Word of God. What well, the Word of God is uh, when you translate it back to the original Greek is the logos. You know what I'm saying? You know what it's like. So John 1 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was God, right? That word, when you look at it in the concordance or the original etymology of it, is logic and sound reason. You know what I'm saying? And I just think those who are talking about the Word or the Word of God being logic and sound reason, right? So logic represents that, like we're talking about, that knowledge, all the information. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, okay, I got this information. But the sound reasoning part, that means connecting this information to an object. You feel me? And if I can't connect this information to an object, then this information is pointless. You know what I'm saying? When I truly understood that, like, that the knowledge is not as important to what it's connecting to, you know what I'm saying? Then that's where the love come in at. That's where the understanding and patience and humility, you feel me? Because, okay, like what you're saying, some of this ain't for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to be able to reach certain people or whatever. But you might get a, a young brother, 19, 20, 21, that's like, I get it all the time. They love the information, love this, woo, woo, you know what I mean? Put them on some stuff. That was the ones you said. You feel me? Then they go to their partners or whoever. Right. Then they go put them on some stuff. Then they come back to you. Man, I just told you, man, they going crazy. You got some more of that? Is it like crack? Man, you got some more of that? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, man, I got you, man. Yeah, check, check the book out. Check out the link. You know what I'm saying? You know, but they only want to buy from them. You know no. what I'm saying? They don't want to buy the dope from you. They only want to buy it from, you know what I'm saying, who they know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's Before I close out, right, I was recently in the room. I went to go see uh, Ben Carson. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. clears throat> You went and saw Ben Carson? I went and saw Ben Carson. At his house? I'm going to tell you why I went. I'm going to tell you why I went to go see Ben Carson first. Right? You got to so, this. You got me scared. No, I'm scared. So, no. I, I read Ben Carson's book while I was in prison. And I love the story. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with his story. You know, he had a rough childhood. Right, right, right. You know, um, his mom was real strict on him. Made him read. But you see how he became, he became a brain surgeon. Right. Anyway, I got invited to see him. He was at the city auditorium. Okay. Okay. I stepped inside the room. Wow. I'm blown away because I'm looking at the power in the room and then I look at making, right? Mm -hmm. This room, doctors, lawyers, professionals, political people. I'm not going to name who was in the room, but political people was in the room. And I compare this to us. Like, could we really put a room together like that? And what would it look like? If you get what I'm saying. Like, right now, could we put a room like that together? And how? Again, we have black people that have businesses. Again, we have professional people. Again, we have scholars. But when it comes to us, we don't work together. It's and, the same and I just want to, and to paint the picture, what you're saying, if you remember the room we were just in a couple of weeks ago with Brock, when we was at Frank Johnson, imagine how powerful that room is and imagine what was missing from it. Well, I, I, and that's where I, I understand exactly what you're saying, right? And I, I think that uh, it's the same. When you brought that meeting up, we were talking about the same thing in that meeting. And we talk about the same thing every day. Right. That's the title of this podcast, Culture. You feel me? Culture is you understand the cause and effect. That's it's Peter. Like, the way I, I describe culture is cause and effect. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You understand how this over here affects that over there. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, when this is happening over here, it's making this do that over there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to worry about me all the time because I know that this is taking care of me over here and this and that and so on and so on. You know what I'm saying? That conversation so that's, yeah. that kills the ego in itself. Mm -hmm. So that allows everybody to now understand their assignment, work within their assignment, everybody supports them in their assignment, and they bring it back 
to, to, to the great good. And that's exactly how I feel. Because knowing and seeing, okay, you know, you know how you're going to count that. You got to create something just as equivalent or something even better. Mm-hmm. So it don't affect right, right, us. Right. You get what I'm saying? And I'm just like, how? Because we so divided. We don't work together. We don't. We don't do this. And and it's like they're strong, and they only get stronger. But well, from my standpoint, I'm going to keep it real, 100 with you. Like, and anybody can disagree or whatever. I'm telling them to do the research, right? That we're so divided because of the fact that these folks are using our science against us, right? Mm-hmm. Every single language, every everything began with like even when you study etymology, right? Mm-hmm. So Aramaic, or even what we call Hebrew or whatever, came from Metsu You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Sanskrit. Most of it, even Arabic, came from a lot of these ancient African languages. You know what I'm saying? This is our stuff. So even all the stories that we hear from, whether it be every Abraham religion, or every religion in general has the same basic concept or the same basic story. Right. You know what I'm saying? All of them. You know, even if they're not Abrahamic, even if they're Native American. You know what I'm saying? So what is the what? What is that common denominator? That common denominator is African centered culture and history. Is our Stuff is our science. Right. The biggest problem I see in it today is black folks are scared to death of the word culture in Africa. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just that, that simple. Like Marcus Garvey, what was the name of his movement? It was a pan African black, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Red, black, and green. Back in the day, we, we, had, we weren't scared of being so called from Africa. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it's, <laughs> that's crazy. It's the, it's the representation of Africa. You know, when, when, when you hear Africa, it, you think jungle, you think, you know, flies on kids' faces. It's, it's just the imagery that we've been shown yeah. of Africa. We haven't seen the, the best parts. Right, right, right. You know, I had a lady by the name of uh, Linda Solomon. She came out and did a presentation for the kids when she went on a trip to uh, South Africa. Okay. And she was just showing, and they was just like, "Wow!" Like, it it, it just, right. and that's what we need. That's Exposure true. is everything. Like, like, I just got my lineage right, like a couple of years ago, uh, on my mom's side, where I uh, got my DNA uh, from African ancestry. Trace it all the way back. Yeah, yeah, you okay. feel me? So I got like two thousand years back on my mom's side, then trace me back to being a T. Car tribe of Cameroon. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I started doing all this. Studying on it, I'm a part of this group now on Facebook. You know, we other some other Cameroonians, we linking up. We supposed to go in two weeks. We're gonna meet at this uh, African Cameroonian restaurant in Atlanta. We're gonna meet together. That's you know great. what I'm saying? Wow. But um, I'm also looking at taking a trip now to Cameroon. So now, I mean, I'm studying. I didn't know the Cameroon had the most beautiful beaches like in the world. Like a lot of super rich folks go to Cameroon for the beaches. You know what I'm saying? But no black folks That's, ain't really. You, know. you feel me? You so. Now I'm, you know, I've been looking at resorts and me taking a trip back to my own hometown, I mean, own homeland. And, uh, you know, it's beautiful, man, once you can start connecting things from, just going inside of self and studying yourself and see how it connects to everything on the outside, everything we're dealing with today. You know what I'm saying? So I think those are, that's the solution to some of everything that we're dealing with, man. Like, I mean, you and I both know it in different ways. If we just have the knowledge of self, to understand our history, we'll have pragmatic and uh, practical solutions for everything that we've been with. Indeed, indeed. And it's always a blessing talking to this brother. It's always knowledge. It's always elevation. And I hope y'all picked up them jewels this brother dropped, man. It's always a pleasure. Man, like Thank my brother. Hope they picked up yours too. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. Peace. Lotus is key and Star Coalition Projects presents monthly basketball camps. And they are not recruiting players. They will have food, entertainment, life skill workshops, and basketball fundamentals. Players of all skill levels, ages between 8 to 17, are welcome. Parent guardianship required to sign waiver for participation. Contact Leroy Gerald at 478-320-9554. Or at the website, loiskidsinc.org. L-O-I-S-S-K-I-D. S-I-N-C dot org.